Good Sunday morning, everyone. My name is Amy Williams. Thank you so much for joining in my craft studio today. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, and today I'm gonna show you something a little different. We're gonna do um, a little uh, gift box that you could uh, put goodies in to give to your friends. This is definitely the holiday season where we gift giving season. Um, I've already started purchasing things. I'm excited about it. I love, I love this time of year because I love giving gifts. So um, this is this was right up my alley when I saw it. This was actually um, a demonstration that someone on our team demonstrated. Um, if you're interested in becoming a Stampin' Up demonstrator and like to join the team, we would I would love to have you. Um, the link to that is below, uh, along with a link to my website. If you see anything you'd like to purchase today. And um, if you would also like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate that. All right, so today we are going to make this darling box and you can see it's all four sides. We've done a little something on everywhere. You put your stuff in here, you can add tissue paper. How cute is that? I love this. You can do it for so many others. I have some um, other ones I'll show you at the end that I've done. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with this adorable little box. So here we go. All right, so here is, make sure everything is in. All right, so here we go. Here's what we're gonna make. Now I am using the Framed Florets um, stamp set that is actually not in the catalog yet. This will be in the mini catalog. It is, um, this stamp set right here is the Frame Florets. It has um, paper, it has a die cut, it also has another stamp set that goes with it, and some really cute little jewels that um, are somewhere else in the studio that I can't remember where they are. So here's the stamp set. Now this will be in the, this will be in this mini catalog as well as the dies, okay? And it cuts all of these out and some things on the paper. And it's got some beautiful, um, uh, frames. Let's see. Okay. It has got these beautiful frames. Let me pull this out real quick. Ah, oh, man away. So you can see it has this one. A lot of people are calling this the Snow White. You can see where this um, does that. So it's got this frame, an oval, and then it has this heart one. It has this one that I'm using today. Um, this and all these other ones that will cut out these. So there is the um, the dies that go with that. Again, these will be in the mini catalog. Now it also has another stamp set that is only good through November, because this is framed in festive, and all of these are meant to go in those frames. And I have a frame cut out, so you can see how they will all um, fit in the frame. So they will all do that. I love the um, um, font. Of these I just thought it was a really fun font um, so I I really liked that so I I got that and then the paper and I'm going to show you the paper we're going to use some of it today so here is the paper we've got this one that uses um, balmy blue and evergreen and then I love this background um, this of course um, this is all occasion here's this with the polished pink on the back this has got the, the flowers, the kind of set that you can see with this um, evergreen and blue. This is got some navy, balmy blue, evergreen. Love this on the background. Reminds me of wallpaper, I don't know why. I love this one, I think this is a gorgeous one. I think you can definitely um, make this very Christmassy. And then it's got the blushing bride on the back. And then this one is meant for these. These two will cut out with the um, die cuts. And I think this one might too. I could be wrong, but I thought it might work. And so, um, and then it has this beautiful one on here. So there is that. Now we are going to, um, we're gonna start with the uh, scoring. And if you have this scoring, um, uh, simply scored, then you are really going to be in business because this is how that goes. Let's see. I hope you can see all of it. Yes. Okay. So I have this set up 
at four and eight. So we're gonna make um, nine, nine squares of this. This um, tool comes with it. It has a small side and a large side. I don't know why I always use the small side. I just do, it's in my brain. That's what I do. Um, but you do wanna be careful, especially if you're using designer series paper, um, that you don't uh, go too hard because it will cut through. This is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And as soon as I saw her do this technique, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have any paper that's, um, I haven't bought the, all the 12 by 12 sets yet. Well, of course, that's the next thing I did, then like two days later. Uh, but I also um, have got one that is with eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna show you that one as well. All right, so we're gonna score and we're just gonna go straight down at four and eight. And again, oh, I'm using balmy blue here and I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do this again at four and eight, okay? So I have nine square. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to score from here to here. And it's it's kind of it's it's kind of tricky. So I'm gonna show you what I did. I have a clear ruler and that really helps me. So I'm gonna make sure that my clear ruler is up against where it is. I've got my point in one of the grooves, and I'm gonna move the paper to where I'm gonna be scoring, okay? So that I've got that, and so then I know where to score here, okay? And you can kind of see that I'm off, I'm here too. Okay, so I've got one, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna butt this against, then I'm gonna move my paper to get to that corner. Then I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna score. Now, if your cutter has a scoring blade, you can absolutely do this. It's just a little difficult because this is quite a bit longer than your scoring blade. So this is um, this is where this tool is amazing. I thought it was like, oh, I don't wanna spend that much money on that, but you know what? It really has come in handy. Again, I'm butting it up against and I'm moving it to here. Let me see, that needs to be there. Okay, now I'm in business. There's my third one. And then one more, oopsie, one more. I've got that right there. Put that point in there. And then I'm gonna line this up here, moving my paper, kind of seeing that I am equal all the way. So there you go, all right. Now I have all the scoring done. Simple and easy, I think. So I love that. So there's this. Now I'm gonna get out my bone folder and I'm going to fold and bone fold these because I want these to be nice and um, done. All right, I'm gonna do that. Let's see. Okay, two three and four. And I just remembered that I forgot to get another piece of balmy blue. So I'm gonna do that real quick because I want you to see this inside piece. All right. All right. Okay. Now, I wanna make sure that my box is, um, um, sturdy on the bottom. Now our cardstock is a nice thick weight, okay? But if you're gonna be doing something at all heavy, I want you to go ahead and cut another piece. Now the bottom of this is four by four, but I'm not gonna cut this four by four. I'm gonna cut it four and seven eighths. Wait, six eighths, okay? Just a little bit smaller. I want you to see what I'm gonna do with that, okay? Right there, okay? Just a bit smaller, because I want this to be smaller than the score lines, okay? I want it to be, I want these to be able to come up. And if you make it too big, it won't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
Uh, maybe out of that. No, nope, not yet. Okay. And then I'm going to stick this right here. And I don't want to forget, so I'm going to go ahead and do it because I know me well enough. Now, the next thing I want to do is I've got this to be here. I need these to come in, and I'm going to go ahead and score these. I'm going to push them in like this, okay? And I'm going to add a score. Boom. Okay. Do it like this. Okay, add a score. Do it on that score line. Give it a nice little boom. And then the last one. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you can see that I've done that. Okay. So then you can see where these will all, these are all going to come in like this and create your box, okay? And I'm gonna show you a minute how this is gonna come around. Well, actually, I can show you right now. It's gonna use a ring to, to attach these, okay? Now, we don't want these sides to just look like this, so we're obviously gonna decorate a little bit. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Now, I'm gonna set this aside just a moment. I'm gonna start with this piece of white, okay? And I'm gonna use this frame. I've decided to use this frame. Sometimes I'm not as frilly. Sometimes I, di I didn't really want that frilly. Um, I don't, I'm not a big heart person, so, uh, but I really love, I love this one. So we're gonna use um, Wishes for a Beautiful Birthday because I feel like Typically when I'm giving gifts, it's going to be a birthday gift. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got this on my block already. I'm using Evening Evergreen. I'm gonna put this here so that I know where I want to stamp it. Okay, I'm gonna put this kind of in the center. Okay, and I could go ahead and put it down, but I'm not gonna. All right, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna put my Warm Winter Wishes. Mainly that if that's, all the way down and I mess up, I can't turn the paper over. So there we go. Warm winter wishes. Put that to the side. We, our wishes for a beautiful birthday. Oh, I keep saying warm winter wishes. All right. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put the frame around it. All right. Okay. down like that. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. Okay, now I've also, I went ahead and cut this out. This is um, actually, and I'm gonna go a little bit higher because, well, I can, uh, because um, I can go higher, I just really can't go lower. If it goes, uh, if it goes above, that's okay, but I don't want it below. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here, I'm gonna kind of figure out how I want it. I think, I think maybe like that looks good. So of course I'm gonna use dimensionals because, well, it's me. But I'm gonna make sure that I don't go too um, high with the dimensionals because I know I'm going off of here. So I'm gonna kind of keep these kind of, kind of on the down low. All right, that's not funny, I know, I'm sorry. Um, all right, so I'm gonna add these. Now this did not um, die cut. There's not a die cut for this one. I'll be honest, this is the only one on that whole sheet that is the whole piece. And so I fussy cut it, which I don't mind fussy cutting. I think that's fun sometimes. It's a little therapeutic. All right, so I've got that right there. Now I thought I wanted a little bit down below, so I cut this out. I'm gonna add this right here, okay. So I'm going to add that. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, that. And I just um, I just kind of add where I need. Just little dots here and there. You know, this glue is pretty sturdy. It doesn't need a ton. So I'm going to put that right there. Now, I don't want it to go too low. I really don't want to go that too low because it's then it's going to kind of mess it up a little bit. I cut this out, I was gonna see if I thought I needed it. You know what, I kinda like that. So I'm gonna add some dimensionals to that and add that. I thought, oh, why not? Let's do a little bit more, right? 
And again, this is from one of the pieces of paper. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just, um, I'll just do that. Look at that, how cute is that? So then I've got some more blue on there. All right, so I am ready to add this. Now you wanna make sure that you're doing it on the piece that's going to come up. So I'm doing it on the back. This is going to come up and I'm going to put it right here. Well, hello, Solo. My dog has come to join me, which I say my dog. It's not really, it's my son's dog. He's visiting, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna add the glue to that and I'm gonna stick that on right here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this a quarter of a turn and I'm gonna add this paper because I thought this was so pretty on there. So I'm gonna add this paper to the sides, okay? This side and this side is going to get this, okay? And I cut these at uh, three and three fourths by three and three fourths. So they were a little smaller and it added a mat to that. All right, now I'm gonna turn it another quarter and I'm gonna use this same paper, but I wanna have this side up, okay? Because I'm gonna do a little fun with the back. So I'm gonna add this. Now I am using the center of the frame. So I'm using the center of the frame to put here. All right, so I'm gonna put that right there. I mean, why not? It's there, why would we waste it? So we're gonna do that right there. And then I have this that I cut out because it's an easy die cut. And I'm gonna put this on top of this, just like that. So I'm gonna put this down first, okay? Ta -da! All right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna kind of put that like that so it goes off a little bit. And then this, of course, you know, dimensionals because why wouldn't you, right? Why not? Let's have some fun. Life is better with dimension, right? All right, I have stamp club downstairs once a month and oh my goodness, there's these all over the place. I'm still finding them every month, all the time. All right, so I'm gonna put this little guy right here. And remember, I'm thinking about the fact that it's going to go up. So it's gonna be facing up like that. So there is that. How cute is that? Now one more turn to put another one of these. All right, all righty. So I'm gonna put that right there. And this paper doesn't matter, it's unidirectional. You can kind of go whichever way you want. So there's that. So that is all of my pieces on. Now it's time to put this little booger together. All right. What I'm gonna do is with these, I'm gonna take my hole punch. And you can use a large hole punch or a small hole punch. I happen to have a small hole punch and I like it. So I'm going to use a smaller hole punch and I'm gonna punch it just like that. I'm gonna punch those together if you can, because you wanna make sure that they are as straight across that you, you, so that you can get your loop through. If it's too hard to do two, just try to do the best that you can, because I understand sometimes it's a little harder to go through two pieces of paper, okay? So I'm gonna do that, boom. I'm gonna do this. Really did good on these corners. <laughs> That's like the best I've done, I think. All right. And I'm on camera, which I think that's pretty impressive if you want to know the truth. All right, let's bring these up. Okay, so we are gonna, I have to start here. I don't know why, but all right. We're gonna just go through each one of these and all the way around and clip that in. And you can get these at the, uh, at Staples, they even have them in other colors. You can get really fancy. Um, but quite honestly, this is what I had in my classroom, and so this is what I used. All right, so I've got this, which is fine. It looks fine, but come on. We wanna pretty this up, so I'm gonna use some ribbon. I am using this, um, the first one is um, this, uh, I can't remember what this is called, but this is just some white, 
that we have in the catalog. The next one is Balmy Blue. This is double um, stitched ribbon, which I think is gorgeous. And this is in the mini catalog, so it's only going to be here until the end of the year. It's with the, um, the gnome set. So it's white and balmy blue. I love that. And then I had to add a little bit of pink in there for the to go with it. So that's a polished pink. And this is um, one of our in colors. And this is um, uh, the, um, what is this called? Open Weave Ribbon. It's got some organza in the middle of it. So this is polished pink. And this is in the main catalog. All right. So here we go. Let's start tying. I have these. And honestly, I did not um, measure these. That was way more than my little brain was willing to do. Okay, so let's see. You're just gonna tie them on um, seriously as um, easy as can be. I did not tie a bow, I did not tie a knot. I just did it one time, one tie, I didn't tie a double knot or anything like that because again, that seems like a lot of work. Um, and uh, you can use any ribbon, any size, um, any color, anything you have. And if you want to skip this step, then you absolutely can. Um, of course, you can skip any step you want because it's yours. So you can do anything you want. Let's see. Uh, all right. There is that. I wonder if I, we're fixing to make some pizzas here, some homemade pizzas on our pizza oven that goes on our smoker. I assume that the car leaving was somebody going to get pizza crusts. Sounds so good, doesn't it? Oh, homemade pizza is the best. So I'm adding the blue now, and I'm just doing one of each on each of the four corners because... Um, I want to have enough ribbon to kind of um, cover the silver. I want to um, definitely don't want the silver showing a ton. Uh, but if if that doesn't bother you, or if you have a fancy one, if you have a um, a colored one, then you might not even need the ribbon. I mean, you can do whatever you want. All right, let's see a little bit more. You know, I think this actually. I think this is. I think this is covered enough. I don't even think I need the pink, to be honest with you. I think this is, I think this is plenty of ribbon. But again, if I wanted to add the pink, I could. Now I'm feeling guilty. I feel like I need to add a little bit of pink. Maybe I'll just add two pinks. Okay. Ah, all right. All right. So we'll add one pink here. And we'll do one pink over here. You do not have to be symmetrical if you want to be more random. I wish I could be more random, but my little brain doesn't do that. So I have to be a little more symmetrical. So they're right across from each other. So there is, there is our cute little box. We've got, oh, let's see. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. This, we've got this side with the back and then that. I think this is an adorable box. You can fit so much stuff in here, you would, you would be really, really surprised. All right, so let me show you some others. So I'm gonna flip the camera back so that you can kind of see me for a minute. All right, hey, what did you think of that? I hope you liked that. Um, let me show you another one I did for Christmas. Now this one I used um, regular designer series paper. I'm gonna pull that up just a little bit. All right, yeah, I used regular designer series paper for the whole thing. So I did this one, okay. I used this beautiful designer series paper. I did make sure on the inside I did a kind of a coordinating color for the bottom. And these are all of the ribbon I used. And this is um, this is a set that's in the mini catalog. It says, Merry Christmas. I kind of can't tell from the, um, uh, the little bit of glare. But the thing I like about this set is adding that Merry Christmas in there is so easy. I, this is almost goof proof. It's so easy to stick those words in there. I didn't have any problem with that. I really like that one. So, and honestly, I did not do, um, I did not do each side of this one because I didn't think it needed it. This paper was so pretty. I didn't want to cover it up. It is a little, um, more flimsy. It's a little thinner than this. So I might want to put like 
um, candles and stuff. I think definitely you can put a candle in this, but I might hold off on a, a really heavy candle in that one. All right, then I also did a smaller one because when I first saw this, um, I was a little worried about the DSP. I was like, oh, what if that's, what if I want to do something heavy? Um, and I thought, well, um, what if I want to do something smaller? Because I really just couldn't wait. Um, so I made this little one. I thought it was really cute. I used the gnome set. Um, and so I did this one with eight and a half by 11 paper. A little girl gnome there. I thought that was so cute. And then here's the inside. Definitely can fit gift cards and some little things in here. You can get plenty of stuff in here. Um, and I did this. I used it eight and a half. And I think I did two and seven eighths. So I just did it eight and a half by eight and a half. And I, you can see, I did that here. I cut this to eight and a half by eight and a half and it still works just fine. So you can do it. I don't think you can, you can't really see that. Let me, let me fold those real quick so you can kind of see the way it looks when it's folded. Um, two and six eighths is what I did. So you can kind of see that, um, folds right there and it folds in. So you can do it with eight and a half by 11 if you don't have 12 by 12, because definitely I think this is something you could use all the time. Have these, have these stored away. If you have a teacher in your life, make her these, put school supplies in there. Um, pens, teachers love pens. If you don't know that by now, I'm telling you, we love post-it notes. We love pens. All that fun stuff can go in here. Candy, chocolate, I highly suggest that. You could put some cookies in there. Oh, sky's the limit. So I want to encourage you to do that because I just think that's so fun. Add tissue paper so that they can't see what's in there, you know, when you give it to them. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, if you did like it, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out. Um, I would really appreciate that. And uh, thank you. And tell me in the comments what you think. I hope that you have a fantastic week. Um, create something and do something kind for someone else. Bye. Have a great week.